Hello and welcome to Winter in Queenstown. I'm Linda McIntosh and I'm the Trade Marketing Manager for Destination Queenstown. And I work with you, the travel trade, to make sure that you have all the tools when it comes to selling Queenstown to your clients and building their itineraries. Winter has finally arrived in Queenstown and in this particular training I'm going to give you an overview of Queenstown in the winter season and what your clients can expect to have an unforgettable holiday. I'll also provide a short product update, so do make sure that you tune in right to the very end. <laughs> so let's start with what makes Queenstown in winter so special. Located in the heart of the New Zealand Southern Alps and set against a stunning backdrop of lakes and mountains as you can see from where I stand here at Kamana Lakehouse. Queenstown offers a winter lover's paradise and a world-class holiday experience like no other in the Southern Hemisphere. Queenstown has four ski resorts that are all within a short drive of our bustling town centre, offering quality snow and a variety of terrain that are suitable for all abilities and all ski and snowboard enthusiasts. Complementing the days that your clients spend up the mountain, they can also experience a range of off-mountain activities and attractions. And you compare this with our vibrant cosmopolitan town centre and the love of food and wine, and this ensures that the fun keeps going well after the lifts have closed. So let's go and take a look around. So here I am at the top of Coronet Peak. This was New Zealand's first commercial ski field and it's only a short 25 minute drive from downtown Queenstown. Queenstown is the perfect winter base to hit the slopes, with Coronet Peak, the Remarkables directly across the valley, Cadrona and Triple Cone. Each of them are a world-class ski resort. These four ski areas also feature different terrain and experiences, which means it's worthwhile visiting them all where time allows. Each mountain has something different to offer, from family friendly snow play to beginners looking to find their ski legs, to intermediates ready to explore more of the mountains, right through to advanced skiers that are seeking the challenge. Each mountain offers ski shuttles right from downtown to equipment hire, ski and snowboard lessons and plenty of choice when it comes to on mountain dining. All of this combined makes it a hassle free experience for a great day out on the snow. And if you have clients searching for the ultimate experience or powder hound moment, make sure that you get them to explore a little further afield with one of Queenstown's Halley Ski operators. Nice. As mentioned, the drive times from each of the ski fields make them very accessible. Coronet Peak is the closest with only a 25 minute drive. The Remarkables directly across the basin from town's 45 minutes. Cadrona, one hour away. And Treble Cone Ski Area is just over 90 minutes drive from downtown Queenstown. Triblegone and Cadrona are part of the Wayfair Group and the Remarkables and Coronet Peak are part of the NZ Ski family, which also own Mount Hutt Ski Area near Christchurch. For now I'm going to go and ski down the mountain and meet with Libby over a mulled wine so that she can tell us a little bit more about what's going on at Coronet Peak and its sister ski field, the Remarkables. Otherwise, I'll see you in a little bit. I'll get going and ski. mountain to Queenstown so it's just a 20 minute drive from downtown Queenstown along a seal road so super easy access for um, visitors to town. Uh, it is about 260 hectares of skiable terrain. We've got two um, six seater chairlifts, a gondola, a four seater chairlift and a couple of um, magic carpets as well. Uh, we also have a daycare here so you can bring the kids up, pop them into daycare so they can um, have ski lessons or just spend the day um, being looked after while you go ski. Yeah, sounds good. So I guess some other good questions are for travel sellers. Um, could they share with their clients that would make them have the best possible snow experience? Yeah, so for Coronet Peak um, it would be that um, it's a really snackable mountain so if they're here in Queenstown just for a short amount of time um, want to go skiing but want to experience some other activities around town, this is probably the best mountain for them because they can pop up um, 
and enjoy a few more runs with the girls after we've caught up with Libby. Um, but I guess, yeah, is there any other kind of final round off or, uh, that you'd like to share about Coronet Peak? Uh, Coronet Peak was um, New Zealand's original ski field, so we started in 1947, so we um, we are the oldest and we were the first, so we're the first ski field, we're the first to do night ski. Um, we're a really pioneering mountain up here. Some of the runs are real lead burners, so it's a great place to come and, uh, and get your ski fix. Nice, sounds good. So that's a great update to learn about Coronet Peak, but I now, I guess, miss in the other interest of so across the basin from the Wakatipu about the remarkable detail for the travel trade. Sure, so the Remarkable ski area is about 45 minutes from downtown Weston. Um, the Remarkables is north facing so it has big sunny um, slopes so it stays nice and warm during the day. It's also a great mountain for progression so if you've got um, clients and visitors who are just wanting to learn to ski or snowboard over a few days it's a really good spot um, to go and they can progress quite quickly. Facilities could people expect at the Remarkables? Yeah, so at the Remarkables we have um, two high speed six seater chairlifts, we have two four seater chairlifts, and um, four conveyor magic carpets. And two of them have covered galleries, which are great for learners on those snowy days so they can stay warm inside while they're getting up the slopes. Uh, we also have an ice bar over there, so it's a great spot to go and have lunch or a drink in the afternoon in the sunshine. Uh, we also provide ski lessons, snowboard lessons over there, so everything from beginners right through to some high performance coaching with some um, really top instructors. Amazing, sounds great. So you've covered off some really great detail there. What about transportation up to the mountains? Yeah, so um, the best way to get up to the mountains is on our ski bus. So we have ski buses running from the centre of Queenstown up to Coronet Peak and to the Remarkables with multiple stops along the way. We also have a hotel pickup bus. So there are certain hotels in town that the bus will stop right outside that your clients and visitors can get um, aboard super easy. A little bit about some insider tips from the peak. So, what would be some of your favourite spots on each of the hills? So, here at Coronet Peak, my favourite spot is actually down at Heidi's Hut. So, Heidi's Hut is one of our food and beverage outlets that you um, ski to. It's a little wooden building, it's like an old ski shack, really. Fire pits outside, a nice fireplace inside. So, snowboarding down to that and having a pizza for lunch is um, my favourite spot at Coronet Peak. And then my favourite spot at the Remarkables is um, a run up Shadow Basin to the top of the chairlift and then hiking up to what we call the Lookout where you can um, get a great view over Queenstown and then see that down. Beautiful, that carries in those really iconic photographs yep. that you see in all of the marketing collateral. Yeah. But look, thanks for your time Libby. No it's worries. really important I guess sometimes that you know we can really educate the travel trade and reasons than just reading like the websites and just knowing that Libby's available obviously to be in contact, you can contact me too at any time with respect to um, just learning a little bit about, more about the ski season uh, and the ski proposition here in Queenstown. So great to have you back with us. I'm now joined by James who's the sales manager for Triple Cone and Cadrona in Wanaka. James is going to give us the lowdown on both of these mountains and what their insider tips might be and their unique points of difference. So welcome James. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining yeah. us. So I guess because we are going to talk about both mountains, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you take your pick for which one you'd like to start with and just giving the travel trade a bit of a run through. Yeah, nice. No, well, I certainly don't like to pick favourites. Um, they've both got plenty to offer. So um, yeah, super exciting. Cadrona and Triple Cone are now on the same lift paths as of 2020. Uh, and we, we, we kind of stay there at the end to the end of the other's yang. Um, Kadrona is great for families, uh, definitely terrain and, and features for, for all abilities, um, whereas Triple Cone tends to be oriented more towards that intermediate to advanced ski of water. Um, yeah, Kadrona has you know, the family facilities, the terrain parks, whereas TC has the big mountain terrain, um, incredible views. So, yeah, together they kind of come together and create a nice kind of complement as, as a whole. Beautiful, that sounds great. Um, so in terms of booking uh, a travel experience and these guys booking client itineraries, mm -hmm. what would be some good tips that you can give these travel sellers when it comes to putting packages together for the mountains? 
Well, that's, a, that's another really good question. It kind of depends who you're booking for. I mean, some people just need the basic look pass uh, and you're good to go. Um, but it's really good to have a chat to the, to the guests and, and understand what their needs are. You know, for a family, um, Kadrona has really good uh, learners facilities, um, early child kids centre as well, so fully licensed for kids as young as three months old. So it's really just understanding what the needs are. Um, what we get a lot of the time for beginners is they, they just don't know what they need. So we've got a lot of packages that are kind of preset. Yeah. So we've got a, a first time of packages, which includes lift pass, lesson and rentals. We've got a single lesson package for someone that just needs a bit of a refresher. So that includes, again, um, lift pass, lesson and rentals, but um, a tall mountain lift pass, whereas the beginners are just become a learner slope. So really understanding what the needs are and, and kind of profiling those guests and, and would always recommend lessons yeah. for, for skiing. Uh, we've got different lesson options for all abilities, but if we're talking about Cadrone and Triple Cone, understanding where their ability is at as well, because uh, I wouldn't send beginner families to Triple Cone, whereas right. Cadrone has a lot of options for them. Nice. That's a great detail of information that you've given us. So let's talk a little bit about the accessibility yep. to Triple Cone and Cadrone. Yeah, for sure. So um, the two mountains are right next to each other. There is a bit of a distance between them. So um, for anyone that's thinking they can ski both in one day, they absolutely can. Um, but just be reminded that it's an hour's distance between the two. But our major kind of, I guess, port of entry um, for both resorts is Queenstown. Uh, for Cadrona, over half of our guests daily come from Queenstown. Um, we do also have Wanaka, which is an hour's drive from Queenstown. So Cadrona sits as the crow flies, halfway between the two. Um, so around about an hour's drive from, um, from Queenstown, once you, once you head up the mountain road, uh, about 30 minutes from Wanaka. And then Triple Cone is just out the other side of Wanaka, so that's about an hour and a half to two hours from Queenstown, and again, 30 minutes from Wanaka as well. So. Yeah, I mean, we, we get guests that choose to stay in both locations, um, but yeah, certainly if you're looking for that, that main entry point into the region, is Queenstown Airport is the most popular for our yeah, guests. Yeah, nice. That's a really good tip to know. So what would be one of the most commonly asked questions that you would get for the from the travel trade? Yeah, so one of the, one of the most common questions without doubt will be, would probably be why ski New Zealand? Um, we get that a lot, you know, people have got lots of different options. They could head to um, Japan for some amazing carter or North America and Europe for you know, those massive big ski resorts. What I, what I would definitely suggest 100% is you can still have an amazing ski experience in New Zealand, but a, a lot of it is about more than just the ski experience. So um, obviously you've got great days on the hills and the slopes, but it, you can't do that all day every day in your holiday. People tend to get a little bit tired, especially if you're not doing too much skiing. Yeah. So the great thing about um, being down in this region is all the other activities you, you can kind of do. And so um, people might not be aware, but Cadrona and Triple Cone are part of the Waco group of companies. So uh, you've got, um, you know, wider experiences within our group, the Milford and Delta Sound Cruises, uh, the Ansel on, on Walter Peak, uh, um, Walter Peak sorry. Um, as well as you know, the Bungees and Jet Boats and everything else in the region. So um, yeah, definitely why ski New Zealand? Well, look, you can have a great ski experience, but you can also do all these other um, adventure activities or wineries or food options for people um, on that down pace. So, yeah. Yeah, great. It's always a really good insider tip, just that there is a lot of activity to be had on the mountain, but a lot of adventure to have on those downtown days. So tell us what's something that's new and exciting that's happening for both ski areas this winter. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's actually quite a bit happening. Um, the, the one that we're super excited about is the new terrain running up into Willows. So that's the first time that new terrain has been opened on the New Zealand ski field for well, almost 10 years now. So really exciting to have um, some intermediate terrain, lots of, um, or some, some new options for our guests that it might have been beforehand. Uh, we're, we're continuing to upgrade the snowmaking system on both Cadrona and Triple Cone, which just gives us a little bit more reliability. You know, early season and conditions might not be um, quite what we'd hoped them to be. Uh, one thing that's that's exciting for us and ex certainly exciting for some people is the new toilets we've put over in the saddle at TC. Great. A lot of people don't get excited about toilets, but these are <laughs> up at uh, about 1600 metres with an incredible view out over um, Lake Wanaka, so they, they definitely lovely. are a little bit of view. <laughs> Uh, and then a big one that we're really passionate about at the moment is our sustainability initiatives. So nice. it's been a bit of a journey we've gone on for the past couple of years. Um, a few years ago we got rid of single-use coffee cups on the mountain, we got rid of uh, single-use plates and cutlery as well, so it's all reusable. Mm -hmm. Last year we got rid of any plastic being sold on the mountain as well, so everything yeah. comes in uh, glass bottles or cans. Uh, and this year we've, we've made a pretty big step. Uh, it's the first of first kind of step on this, this kind of 
next leg of the journey for us is getting rid of all rubbish bins up on the mountain as well. Right. Uh, yeah. So we're not we're not going to get it perfect from year one, um, but we're we're encouraging all of our guests to come on the journey with us. We won't sell anything on the mountain that creates waste, so all packaging on the mountain needs to be compostable or recyclable. Amazing. Uh, and we're encouraging guests as well to um, if they are bringing food up the mountain where possible to reuse reusable uh, packaging and or containers uh, and to pack their rubbish back out with them. So leave any footprints, take any pictures. I love that. Uh, um, but yeah. Yeah, that's a really lovely um, initiative. Yeah, and uh, I do think as well, you know, we've, we've got guests that come from around the country and around the world, and if they can pick up on some of these little initiatives and, and kind of take that home and see that in their own lives, um, yeah, uh, as, as a ski industry and a snow industry, we're, we're very aware of some of the impacts of climate change, so we will be doing our part to kind of educate and promote. Um, awesome. Yeah. Nice. Things. That's really exciting and a new initiative. So another question I have for you, James, is what would spring ski look like at the mountains? At the mountains, well, you, you, you've certainly touched on probably one of my favourite times of the year to go skiing. Um, a lot of people think, think spring skiing is all kind of slushy and it's, it's, it's the last of the season. Um, the reality is spring skiing is actually one of the best times to be up there. You know, the days are longer, it's sunny, it's a little bit warmer, the weather tends to be a bit more settled, we've got a good base by then. So, um, yeah, spring skiing is, is, a, is a great option for, for um, get, uh, people and their guests. Uh, we do tend to find that, for, at, certainly at Cadrona, um, our season carries right through to the middle of October, the 17th of October this year that we close. So um, the month of September is, is still pretty much winter conditions. Good, good snow on the ground, kind of by the tail end of September it starts to get a little bit slushy. Um, but that's just a heap of fun to play in, it doesn't, doesn't hurt with your ball. Yeah. Um, Lots of kind of good outfit going on as well, and you can head down off the mountain, and you've still got plenty of daylight to yeah. go for a walk around the lake or, or sit in the sun, have a beer or wine, or Sounds nice. your choice. Yeah, but spring is yeah, really, really fun time up in the mountain. Yeah, beautiful. I kind of agree with that sentiment. It would be my favourite part of the winter season as yeah. well. So, um, look, thanks, James, for your time and just talking about the two mountains. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously know that you can reach out to James at any time for further information um, when it comes to obviously Ski and Cadrona and Triple Cone. So I will tune in with you again a little bit shortly as we go and explore some more adventuring that you can do for those off-mountain days. outdoor hot pool, explore award-winning wineries with a half or full day tour, take to the skies and enjoy a sightseeing experience over our winter wonderland, or maybe push your limits with bungee jumping, canyon swinging and getting out on the rapids and up in the rivers on a jet boat. There are plenty of activities of all tastes and tempos that can suit your off-mountain days whether more adventure and exploration is what your clients seek or maybe it looks a little bit more like relaxation. I'm here at Onsen, which is without a doubt one of the most photographed experiences here in Queenstown. You may have seen it already on many of an Instagrammable moment. Onsen is a gorgeous place to retreat to that also has a day spa on site. Conveniently, it's located only 10 minutes drive from downtown Queenstown and it's located right at the access road of the Coronet Peak Ski Field. It overlooks the Shotover River also, which as you can see is pretty spectacular. It's the perfect way to soak away tired muscles in your own private hot pool or simply melt away the day. Queenstown is home to a whole host of world-class relaxation activities that even the most active of adventurers would be impartial to including. There's a range of day spas, mobile massages and float experiences, kind of like balancing the yin and the yang. In this spot, I could quite easily get into this hot tub and just soak away the day here. it up a notch, I'm now here at iFly Indoor Skydiving which is fantastic after dark or for those off-mountain activity days that is perfect for all ages and stages. It's easy to forget that Queenstown is much more than snow in winter. There's a whole range of activities to get involved in off-mountain from indoor activities like mini golf, 
haunted houses, virtual reality gaming, go-karts, escape rooms, swimming, even enjoying a boutique cinema experience. And of course, there's all the classic experiences like jet boating to scenic flights and adrenaline adventures. But for now, let's go and check out what's happening at iFly. I'm joined by the Sales and Marketing Manager for iFly Indoor Skydiving, Jason. So he's going to tell us a little bit more about how it all works. So iFly is a vertical lift that simulates the free fall aspect of skydiving. We generate up to 265 kilometers of wind speed, which is fantastic. The really cool thing about how this operates is it's safe and fun for all ages, 505, all abilities, and it's the only place in New Zealand where you can experience the solo aspect of free fall without jumping from the plane. So how does it work, and why should everyone give it a go? Cool. Well, as you'll see soon, we've got a vertical wind tunnel. Two vertical minutes of fans directly above it. They spin, generate a rhythm, and it creates this smooth cushion of air which you find. Um, the key reason why you should give it a go is the only place in New Zealand that you can uh, experience that free fall from skydiving uh, from a solo perspective. When you do a skydive with someone else, you're not in control, you're a passenger. Whereas here, we teach you how to fly. Um, the flying is five, the gun size is half five, where the ultimate all weather experience now. Uh, and as we always say, we're skydiving a group right now. Nice, I like that. <laughs> and another really good question, what should a travel seller tell their client about the experience? Yep. Uh, as I mentioned before, we go as young as five, we go as high as a hundred and five. The oldest person we've ever flown is 94 years old. We're fully inclusive, so we fly the We operate seven days, we're in full book activity. Uh, and we have a late night license. In our peak periods, we'll fly as late as 10 p.m., which is part of the reason why we say snow by day, fly by night. You can extend your itinerary, generate more revenue, uh, and build bigger, better experiences for your customers. Awesome, that sounds great. Um, I'm going to ask Jason a little off record question now, but what is your insider tip that makes a good winter holiday here in Queenstown? I have two Patagonia hot chocolates and I fly. Let's go check it out. As you can see behind me, there are great views of Skyline on Bob's Peak, and with a nice outdoor area like this, the challenge is even the coldest of winter evenings, when you can sit fireside, what's not to enjoy? The time-tested tradition of grabbing a drink after a mountain session is nearly as old as the winter sport itself. After all, a drink does taste better after a few turns down the slopes. Here in Queenstown, you are never far away from your next mulled wine or a spiced hot cider, and if a local wine, celebrating a glass of Pinot Noir from the central Otago region is more to your liking, you will be spoiled for choice. And there is always the choice to while away the hours late into the night in the intimate lounge bars that serve up some of Queenstown's best cocktail menus. Our vibrant and cosmopolitan town centre boasts New Zealand's most lively and vibrant acro ski scene, with over 150 bars and restaurants to choose from that will keep the fun going well after dark. From fine dining to boutique eateries to family friendly restaurants to iconic burger joints, there are many delicious food and wine options that will help ground out any day on the slopes or after some downtown adventures. Thanks for tuning in to the new product update for winter 2021. We are going to run through with you today an update on activities, accommodation, places to dine, and leave you with resources at the end there back to the Queenstown NZ travel trade section of the website. But plunging right in, starting off with activities and keeping in with our winter theme and our catch up with Padrona Alpine Resort, they are making their first move into the Soho ski area with the installation of the Willows Quad Chair this winter. So that's a really exciting development that actually unlocks and opens up 65 hectares of additional new terrain. So a really exciting development to reiterate for any ski enthusiast. Milford is now offering New Zealand's isolated gem, Milford Sound, as well as five big glaciers flights. This is a one hour scenic flight where you board their Cessna aircraft from Queenstown 
and you'll be transported through to a magical wonder of dramatic views, including the Rob Roy, Bonner, Jura, the Volta, Dark, Olivine, and Donna Glaciers, as well as the famous Milford Sound. So each tour is guaranteed to see at least five major glaciers, uh, although they may not be as world famous like Fox and Franz Joseph glaciers, but they are Kiwi secrets that have otherwise been reserved to advanced mountaineers. So this tour is a great option for any client that is time poor. <clears throat> Excuse me, the departures are in winter at 9.30 a.m. That's right from the 1st of May through until the 30th of September. And then they will revert to that 8 a.m. departure from the 1st of October for the summer season. The Emilfords experience, they're established, it's personalised, and they're really thrilled to be able to offer unique experiences um, and exclusive experiences such as this. For those that have keen golf enthusiasts as clients, the Queenstown Golf Collective Superpass allows golfers around at Arrowtown, Jacks Point, Millbrook and Queenstown courses all on the same pass. So it's available to book with Remarkables Golf Tours, and they can also arrange other golf services as required, the likes of tee off times and reservations there or equipment hire and transportation. Coming to uh, this product extension, Time Tripper Queenstown. So this can be added to any KJet booking for the travel trade. It is Queenstown's only underwater cinematic experience. Uh, and Time Trip is basically just a state of the art animated show situated under Lake Wakatipu and it tells the legend, uh, the Maori legend of the lake and the story of the creation of the Wakatipu region starting some 90 million years, years ago that takes the viewer right through to the present day in Queenstown. So it's a really great way to round off any experience uh, on the jet boat. The show is approximately 15 minutes long and then there's 10 to 15 minutes of underwater viewing available afterwards where you can see the eels and diving ducks and the trout that live under Lake Wakatipu. So it's a fun experience for young and old. Coming through to accommodation, Relax it's done off a luxury accommodation and property management in Queenstown and they have a new product uh, of property in their portfolio which is called Castle Cliff Lodge. This property has been renovated to really incredibly high standards and it was just completed in May of 2021. So the key features of this particular property are that it sleeps 12 the great four groups or large family traveling together, the spa pool, outdoor barbecue and dining area, as well as an outdoor fireplace, there's a sauna room, two indoor fireplaces, a billiards table, there's ping pong, dart boards, a boardroom table even, um, and three smart TVs, including one large 90 inch screen. So Castle Cliff Lodge is quite incredible views as you can see from the image there from the hot tub, uh, 270 degree views um, and pretty much that panorama encompasses looking over Lake Wakatipu and out to the famous Remarkables mountain range all the way over to Cecil Peak, Walter Peak and Bob's Peak. So other conveniences at this property include unlimited fibre, the Sky Sports channels, there's a chef's kitchen, coffee machine, ski storage, a drying room, but the real standout property that's packed with amenities quite Luckily there for probably what would be an ultimate holiday. Uh, Queenstown House Lakeside Luxury Apartments, they offer an absolute lakefront location and these fully refurbished self-contained apartments are located only two minutes walk right from the centre of Queenstown. As I've said, there's five Lakeside Luxury Apartments. They have a remote check-in in the main Queenstown, or sorry, from the main Queenstown House property here in town, uh, but they are fully serviced uh, fully self-contained apartments with a 24-7 virtual concierge also. For those that know and love Matakaui Lodge, they reopened their doors on the 1st of July and that will just be limited to the winter and spring season. And they offer obviously this beautiful lakeside luxury uh, bed and breakfast and they'll run that through right till the 14th of December. So the main lodge there consists of a beautiful spacious lounge and dining and living area with all with views over Lake Wakatipu. Uh, they also offer a range of indoor and outdoor dining locations for guests, uh, including superb private dining options. There's an elegant meeting space and a business centre and there's just an abundance of natural light and with views out to the mountain ranges and beyond as you can see. The facilities at this property, for those that may not know it so well, include a fully serviced spa, there's an infinity swimming pool, and fully equipped fitness centre, including a sauna and spa. So 
So accommodation is offered in 12 luxurious guest suites and rooms and each suite offers a private porch. There's a bedroom with sitting area and open fireplace, walk-in wardrobes and gorgeous bathroom. And each of these uh, guest suites are nestled into the landscape overlooking Waka Tipu with, again, obviously these, these beautiful views. Uh, the owner's cottage is also another option at Matakari. It features four suites and a freestanding residence um, that has its own private spa, kitchen, and a grand courtyard that makes it really ideal, again, for families, couples, or friends traveling together, uh, as well as those wanting to have special celebrations. So Matakari Lodge is also the sister property of Kauri Cliffs and Cape Kidnappers. Coming through to the LQ Hotel by Ramada. So this property opened just at the end of, oh, sorry, in December, at the end of 2020. And it's located in Remarkables Park and it's 15 minutes from downtown Queenstown. So as you can see, the property has quite remarkable views of the Remarkables mountain range, the Kaura River to the south and Coronet Peak to the north. This property offers a combination of hotel rooms and self-contained apartments in a range of sizes and configurations. So there's 91 guest rooms that each feature king size beds, air conditioning, 40 inch flat screen TVs with Sky TV. Uh, and their studio and one bedroom apartments are fully self-contained, providing kitchenette with stovetop, microwave, including full laundry facilities. So nice little convenient location. Coming soon, I did just want to touch on very quickly, the Sodema Hotel will be opening in 2022. It's located in the Five Mile Retail Centre and available for booking from February of 2022. So what we understand is that it's a four and a, sorry, four and a half star property with 118 rooms that will be made up of superior king, twin and family rooms. So we will share with you more in the future updates as we learn more of uh, the details on the property specifically. The uh, Holiday in Remarkables Park is also opening next year. Uh, it's 182 rooms and bookings available for this property are from November 2021. There's a, going to be a restaurant and bar on site, which is a really great, exciting development for hotels in that location. And this property will be a mix again of hotel rooms and suites. And we believe it, that is a four star property. So again, we'll share just more information as it comes closer to their, to their opening. Coming through to places to dine and eat. So Canyon Brewing has reopened under, under new ownership, operates daily from 11 a.m. through to 8 p.m. And the brewery and restaurant sold to the Boatshed Cafe and Bistro owners at the end of last year for those who know the Boatshed Cafe. So this restaurant and brew house is great for a gathering place of friends and family to sit outside. There's indoor seating available as well, but you can watch the iconic shot of a jet go past um, and simply enjoy a quick bite or a long lunch, even an early dinner. Um, and of course, you can obviously try their local craft beer, which is brewed in-house. The dishery is part of a new hub in Arrow Town called the Dudley's Cottage Precinct. So it's near the Chinese village, which also is in a precinct with uh, honey and cocoa, better by bike and Jenny Murden's artist. Um, so the dishery is the name of this new little cafe here, which basically focuses on lovely locally sourced produce uh, that's paired with great wine, all in this lovely garden setting, as you can see, and it's adjacent to the Arrow River Reserve. So their menu offers breakfast, lunch and early dinner, um, all grazing in between if you should like. The winery is another really good one just to touch on here. So they're the world's largest specialist New Zealand wine store with two locations. There is one in Queenstown, uh, right in central Queenstown in the mall, and the other pictured here is in Arrowtown. So at the winery, clients can taste over 80 award-winning local and single vineyard and reserve wines from boutique wineries from across New Zealand, um, and many of which of these don't have cellar doors, so it makes it for a really great place as a one-stop shop. Um, basically, clients buy wine cards, they uh, at the push of a button, insert that card uh, into a machine and they can choose to just sample a taste or have a half or a full glass of wine. They also are stock us to an extensive range of New Zealand's rare single malt whiskies. I think that there are eight there available for tasting. Um, and you can also have cheese boards and a tapas menu to choose from. So you can really just sit back and relax and enjoy kind of the atmosphere while sampling some beautiful award-winning local wines and cheeses and delicious platters. So great little place uh, to visit, especially if you 
have clients that are time short that can't make it out to the wine region. And finishing off the Margos, this is a New Mexican restaurant located right on Ballarat Street in the Queenstown Mall again. So the atmosphere here is fun, it's bold, it's quite a high energy and colourful with street filled art walls and um, lovely colourful food and flavours and cocktails that really sort of draw on the many uh, inspirations and flavours um, of Mexico. So they're open Wednesday through to Sunday from 5pm to late. That concludes the new product update for this winter stream. Um, obviously for further resources and product updates you can check out our website www.queenstownnz.nz forward slash trade. You can also access this section through the footer of the home page and of course if you ever need further suggestion for product operators for selling to your clients please know that you can contact me at any time and I can share with you just the uh, appropriate sales and marketing contact. So winter has well and truly arrived. We have received a big dump of fresh snow on the mountains overnight. And it's just a great way to bring you down here and actually kind of just see what Queenstown's all about in winter. I've also taken Jason's advice and I've got a Patagonia hot chocolate so I'm keeping my hands nice and warm. But thank you for joining me for this stream on demand winter training. It's really great to have you with us and have training accessible to you in a different way than just another PowerPoint presentation. Know that you can get my contact details at any time. You can access the travel trade section through the footer of the Queenstown NZ home webpage and reach out to me. There's other great resources available to you there as well. We have other PowerPoints with Train the Trainer Notes. There's a whole bunch of information of resources of what's the latest news and information. We've also got some operator training videos for you there as well. But next up is spring. So once we are through here, I look forward to catching you in that time where we'll obviously deliver another on-demand training for you showcasing Queenstown in the spring time when it's the season of new beginnings. Until then, I'll see you there.